at that, yet again we find ourselves on the precipice of another America's Summit Monthly Trial. And we've got some new transmogs in the game, and one of them is pretty dang big. All this and more on the Fuse News, episode 267. So you guys may have seen on the channel a new video dropped over the weekend. It's called 10 Weird and Interesting Summoner's Worth Facts. And I think that they are pretty weird and interesting, as the title implies. There should be at least one or two things in there that you haven't heard before, or maybe you've forgotten if you've been a longtime player. Let me know if you have a fun fact that I missed along the way, and if there's enough in the comments, then maybe I'll do another one full of user-submitted content. But that's not the only video that's launched on the channel recently. We also had the best builds of the RTA Season 29 supports. This season has quite a few banger monsters in it, and a couple of them are like, weirdly efficient. Cigar is looking super stellar on Violent. And also, I love that Rakuni has no accuracy. That means that he's got like no wasted stats, even if there is room for improvement, which is true with a lot of these. I'll have both of those videos linked at the end, so check them out and see if you agree with me. So we have a suite of new transmogs in the game. We have the next two monster families getting second awakening transmogs and the Grim Reapers and the War Bears. Then we've also got the Desert Queens, the Ifrits who have some of the coolest transmogs in the collection so far. I can't get enough of the Ifrit skin. And then there's the demons. The demons look dope, but they also look suspiciously large prompting some online to say that they might even be too big. Which, follow-up question, is there such a thing? I say the demons aren't large enough. We have the technology. Let's double it. Make it so they take up the whole screen. Make it so you can't see the other three monsters at all. I don't know, I kind of like it, but what do you guys think in the comments? Are the demons too big? Do we think we need to reduce the overall size of the model or not? Nah? So now that the 10th anniversary events have been with us for a little while, you've probably had enough time to churn through those 200 10th anniversary scrolls. And I want to do a little survey in the comments. What have you guys pulled? Tell me any notable Nat 5s, any cool LDs you might have pulled. I myself pulled a Chandra that I fed a long time ago back in the prehistoric days before Chandra was good. I got a Manon, I got a Momo, then I got a Molly, Ileana, and a couple other notable four stars that are pretty sweet. But let's make this less about me. Tell me in the comments what you got. And just as a reminder to everybody who completed that event, those 10th anniversary coins are still usable. So make sure you're still farming because there's a coin shop event that's going on. You can technically even buy infinite amounts of mystical scrolls so long as you have enough coins. So when I say keep on farming, <laughs> Boy, do I mean it. Big changes are coming to Siege. We just got a developer's note where the devs outline all the changes that they have planned for Guild Siege as a whole. And this thing definitely marks the start of an overhaul for the format. I'm gonna go over the main points here with you today, but the whole thing is linked in the description if you wanna give it a read for yourself. First of all, we're getting experience rewards for Guild Siege. Here's the table outlining all the rewards that you can earn alongside your guildmates. Then we're also getting a much needed update to the AI on Guild Siege defenses. Now, notably, the devs go out of their way to explain that this is kind of their first attempt at trying to increase the win rate of defenses against overwhelming offenses. But post-patch, they're going to be monitoring the win rates to see how well this affected or if the state of the game is healthy. So just know that they're going to keep their eyes on how this plays out and they're willing to make adjustments in the future. Next, if you have your in-game notifications turned on, you can now receive push notifications alerting you to the progress of siege battles. We're also getting free rune removal coupons added to the guild shop. Now, these are capped at three per month, but it's just so awesome to have them there. They're gonna be priced at 1,000 guild points, and I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be thrilled for their inclusion. Now, arguably my favorite part of the entire dev note is still under development. So that means that it's not necessarily going to be included in the same patch as everything we've already listed. However, eventually we're going to be able to save rune and artifact settings of monsters used in defenses separately from Scenario and RTA. So that means we're basically getting the World Arena rune system but for guilds, and that's so awesome. Again, those are just the broad strokes, but if you wanna read the whole thing, it is in the description down below. Let me know what you think of these changes coming to Siege. The next big event for Summoner's War is happening on May 18th and 19th, and yes, it's gonna be a two-day event. So if you think you can be in the Los Angeles area around those dates, make sure you register using the link that's down in the description below, and we're also going to be having the finals for the America's Summit there, live and in person. It's gonna be a blast, I'm gonna be there, tons of content creators are gonna be there, and I hope you will be there. Again, check out the description because everything you need to know is down there. And speaking of the Americas Summit, our stream this Friday is going to be at a slightly different time to accommodate the April monthly trial. So come by at 4 p.m. Pacific time. I'm gonna be hosting it alongside Once in Love, 
Stoic, and Seppi. And if you haven't been to one of these things live before, they're really fun. They're on Twitch and YouTube, right on the channel that you're watching The Fuse right now. We're gonna have a total of eight participants in a double elimination bracket. We're gonna have four from North America and four from South America. And they're, dude, they're gonna fight. They're gonna fight a lot. Ultimately, the goal here is to try to accumulate as many summoner points as possible, because those are the only things that carry over. And it's also what's going to determine who goes to the finals on May 18th. So come by if you wanna see some crazy names fight in a bracket. We're gonna have True Whale, we're gonna have Zazos returning. We're gonna have Jeff Boladell and Thompson back again. So again, that's 4 p.m. Pacific time. You're not gonna wanna miss it, but if you do miss it, it's also not the end of the world. The VOD is gonna be right here on YouTube too. And our video of the week is brought to you by You Know Juno, who's doing his placement battles in RTA season 29, but he's doing them a little weird. This time he's ruining up a bunch of despair units and taking them into the 10 battles to determine his starting rank. You Know Juno has been pumping out tons of great content recently. Make sure you're subscribed to him if you're not already and tell him we sent you. There are those two videos that I talked about during the episode and it's Friday, my dude. So make sure you pick up your five-star Rainbow Mon and Devil Mon before they fade away in the next week. Keep on farming for realsies this time, and I'll see you right back here for episode 268. Bye, everybody.